Hi everybody, Mr. Allaire here, and in today's podcast, we are going to go beyond Gregor Mendel and his uh, Mendelian genetics to talk about five different concepts, specifically codominance, incomplete dominance, multiple alleles, pleiotropy, and polygenic traits. Before we do that, I think it's really important that we go back and we talk about the principles that Mendel gave us uh, following his research and his discoveries that he made in the 1800s using pea plants. Uh, two of them specifically, first the principle of dominance and then the principle of segregation. Remember the principle of dominance is the idea that while we have uh, different genes or different alleles for a particular gene, uh, one of them is going to be dominant, which we typically write as a capital letter, and one of them is going to be recessive, and we typically write that as a lowercase letter. Uh, so now both of these genotypes are example of homozygous genotypes, the capital B's for homozygous dominant, the lowercase b's for homozygous recessive. Now of course you'll remember that we can have heterozygous and that's where we would have one of each. Now even though we would have one of each, uh, again the principle of dominance tells us that if this individual has a dominant allele. For instance, if we say that this is eye color, uh, this individual is going to have brown eyes even though they do have this blue-eyed allele. And that's because the dominant allele, the capital letter in this case, is going to, for lack of a better term, dominate over the uh, recessive allele. Uh, my eye color is an example of this. Uh, my eyes are brown. Uh, my mom has brown eyes while my dad has blue eyes. So even though I'm heterozygous for brown eyes, uh, I definitely have brown eyes, and that's because the brown-eyed allele is completely dominant over the blue. Uh, now, when a little bit later on, we'll see that eye color is not so, for lack of a better term, black and white, but uh, that gives you a good idea of this idea or principle of dominance. Now, the other idea that we get from Mendel is the principle of segregation, and that's the idea that genes are segregated from each other when gametes are formed. So as sperm for males and uh, eggs for females are created through meiosis, uh, these genes are going to separate from each other uh, to help create some genetic diversity that we see in organisms uh, all over the earth. So the first concept that I want to talk about today uh, in this podcast is incomplete dominance and codominance. Now remember the principle of dominance says that one allele is going to be dominant over the other, but that's not entirely true all the time. Uh, in incomplete in dominance and codominance, we have alleles where one allele is not dominant over the other, and what we get as a result is a situation where both of the alleles actually contribute to the phenotype of the organism. And these carnations are really great examples of this. Uh, the red allele that we would see in a red carnation is absolutely dominant here. So we can write that genotype as homozygous dominant with two capital R's. But at the same time, if we look at a white carnation, the white allele, the white color allele, is also dominant. And so we can write this genotype also as homozygous dominant with two capital W's. So what happens when you mate the two together? Let's say you fertilize a red carnation with a uh, white carnation's pollen, what you're going to get is a codominant or incomplete dominant situation where neither the red nor the white alleles dominate over the other. And as you might suspect, and as you can see here from the picture, uh, we get a situation where both of these contribute to the phenotype. So we have a red carnation and a white carnation. We merge them together. We mate them together. And we get, as a result, a pink carnation. Now, carnations are not the only organism to do this. And a great example from the animal kingdom would be this cow here. And as you can see, this cow has both uh, brown and white parts of it. Uh, rather than a merging of colors like in the carnation, a cow is a much more complicated organism. So we actually get sort of a spotted cow kind of a uh, phenotype here. Now the second idea that I want to go over with you guys is uh, something called multiple alleles. And this is a concept uh, in which while an individual can have no more than two alleles, there are genes that have more than two alleles. So for instance, if we look at our bunny rabbits here, let's say that we have an allele for fur color, and, uh, and that could be brown. So we have 
a, uh, a brown allele, which we can abbreviate using Bs. But at the same time, we also have a white fur color allele, which we can abbreviate as W. Uh, or maybe there is a slightly yellowish uh, fur color, which we can abbreviate as Y, or tan, which we can abbreviate with T's, or gray, that we can abbreviate with G's. And what we get as a result, instead of getting strictly big B's or little B's, we might get some mixture in here of several different alleles. Uh, and what that gives us is lots of different colors. So you see here that we have rabbits that have brown fur and white fur with black ears or completely white fur, sort of a yellowish tan fur as well as gray furred rabbits. So we get lots of different colors and lots of different uh, appearances of lots of different phenotypes for rabbits or bunnies and uh, various other kinds of organisms because there is more than just two types of alleles. It's definitely more than just, say, brown versus white or gray versus black or something like that. There's lots of different subtle coloration here. And again, this is what uh, why we're going beyond Mendel because uh, when he was working with pea plants, the pea plants were fairly simple. Uh, green versus yellow, wrinkled versus round. And what we see here with different organisms is that uh, life is much more complicated uh, than Mendel could have suspected back in the 1800s. So now the next concept that I want to discuss is this something called pleiotropy, pleiotropic genes. And um, this is an idea, uh, or this is where we have a gene that influences multiple phenotypic traits. One gene actually controls many different things that will show up in an individual organism. Uh, what makes this particularly interesting and also particularly dangerous is that if there's, there's a mutation on a gene that's pleiotropic, it can result in a lot of different mutations uh, spread out across the individual that manifests itself in a lot of different ways. And a very common example that people will share of pleiotropic genes and pleiotropic mutations is something called phenylketonuria. You see that right here, which is commonly called PKU. Uh, now, phenylketonuria is a disorder in which an individual is not producing a specific enzyme called phenylalanine hydroxylase. And uh, both phenyl, uh, so phenylalanine is an amino acid. You might remember that from when we talked about that earlier in the year with organic chemistry. And we'll also talk about it a little bit more when we get into DNA, RNA, and proteins. But anyway, phenylalanine is, a pro, is an amino acid. And somebody that has phenylketonuria, again, they're lacking an enzyme that phenylalanine hydroxylase. They're not able to convert that from phenylal phenylalanine uh, into something called tyrosine, which is another amino acid. And the result is that the, uh, this particular genetic disorder can cause not only mental retardation, but also reduced hair and skin pigmentation. So they can have very, very pale skin and often suffer from some type of, uh, uh, again, mental retardation. Now you might be wondering, how common is this particular genetic disorder? Well, it's actually more common than you might think, which is why on a lot of different foods, including Diet Coke, Red Bull, different types of gum, as well as um, Splenda and Equal, you'll see a, a warning label on them that says phenylketonorix contains phenylalanine. And this is a warning for people who might have phenylketonuria that they shouldn't be drinking or eating these things. And that's because it contains a large amount of phenylalanine, which, as I said, they cannot convert into tyrosine. So it can actually end up being very, very harmful for them. Our last uh, of the five concepts that we want to talk about in today's podcast is polygenic traits. And this is a trait that is controlled by two or more genes. Now, I've mentioned several times in class and also in this podcast that things like eye color are way more complicated than we've been making them. It's not a simple principle of dominance where brown is dominant over blue, although you see that definitely is the case. And that's because eye color and skin color are examples of polygenic traits where we have a combination of alleles that really gives us a whole spectrum of, uh, of different uh, colors and tones. 
Uh, so for instance, skin color, and uh, that's one of the reasons I really like this picture, because you can see here that we have some individuals that have very light, very fair skin, as well as very light colored hair. And as we move along this picture, you can see that uh, the individuals uh, have uh, lots of different uh, skin colors and tones, uh, again, ranging from very light and fair skinned to very dark skinned and dark haired individuals and everything in between. And, and that's because there are f uh, a, a few different alleles, a few different genes that control skin color um, and it's the combination of these genes or when a specific gene might be homozygous dominant, homozygous recessive, or heterozygous, the combination of all these different genes give us all of these different tones. Uh, and eye color is also a really great example of this. And you can see here that we have some folks who have uh, fully blue eyes versus more of a greenish with brown flecks uh, versus brown with green flecks. And, uh, and an individual, much like myself, that has very, very dark eyes. And that's, again, just, be, just like skin color, eye color is controlled by more than one gene. So this is uh, polygenic traits, and these are all concepts that go beyond Gregor Mendel and the idea of Mendelian genetics. And I hope you found this podcast helpful.